we are picking up where we left off with Cricut Design Space Basics. If you have not watched part one, if you're an absolute beginner, go ahead and watch that one. I will link it down below. Today, we're going to go over this top panel here, which is all your operations, uh, aligning, and changing sizes, and things like that. So I'm just using a heart shape as an example. These first two functions are just undo and redo. So if I made a mistake and made this a little bit too big, I can just undo to go back and redo to do it again. And then we have our operations. So this changes um, what you want your machine to do once your design is all done. Um, it defaults to basic cut, but you can change it to wavy, which cuts the edge with like a wavy zigzag type of pattern and perforate which creates this like dotted line um, that's if you wanted to make like uh, tickets or things like that it gives you a little decorative um, tear spot really then we have uh, and those two wavy and perforate do require separate blades um, which are, come separately within your machine uh, then we have draw, um, which uses the pens and the markers. And again, this is telling your machine, hey, I want to draw this part of my design. And once you select this operation, though, you do have to tell it, hey, here's the pen or marker I want you to use. So if you select gel, it gives you all the color options there for the gel pens, marker calligraphy and so forth. Let's change this back to basic. Then we have foil, which is again a special uh, tip and uh, a whole kit that comes with foiling sheets um, that you can use to make designs on different things with the foil. Uh, then we have scoring, which is just creating a, an indented line that you can fold along. So that gives you a nice um, a guide to fold with. Then we have debossing, which is kind of like embossing, but this creates an indented design uh, to give you dimension to different projects. And lastly here is engraving, which once again is a different tool or a tip, I should say, um, a different cutting tool that you put in the machine to use with um, like soft metals, acrylic, and even some thin woods. And this, a lot of these um, can actually only be used with the maker machines um, because they are the ones that can cut um, a larger variety of materials. Then we have the print and cut, print then cut, which is a feature that works along with your printer to create full color designs on either paper or printable vinyl. You would uh, print your design first on the paper and then bring it back to your machine and it has like guidelines that tell your machine where to cut. And finally we have guide, which just takes any of your shapes and, and turns it into just a line. And this tells your machine hey, I'm not going to cut this piece out. It's just a guide that I'm using to size my design. So hope that all makes sense. So I'm going to change this back to basic. And I'm going to grab one more shape for the next few parts here. So next we have select all, which is if you have more than one uh, design or image on the screen, you can just select all. It's going to take everything and apply whatever function you're going to do to everything. You can deselect. You can also just click and drag on the screen to select everything or just select over what you want. Next, we have edit, which is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to you can cut to remove something and copy paste, duplicate, 
things like that. I'm going to go through each of the align functions just so you can see how it works. And that's why I brought the second shape up there. So I'm going to just select. You do have to select more than one uh, shape or image in order to use the align function. So if we wanted to align these to the left side, it's going to bring all your left hand edges together. Horizontally, center, it's going to, based on where they are, bring the centers in alignment with each other. And we have a line right, same thing as left. A line top, center vertically. So that's going to bring the center of each image to the center. Or we can align it to the bottom. And then just center everything right to the direct center of each one. And at the bottom of this, we also have distribute, which works with three or more shapes or images. So let's add another shape here. And this is basically the spacing. So say I wanted these space evenly spaced. We're going to go ahead and do distribute. Horizontally is going to space it this way and vertically up and down. There we go. So I believe it does, it spaces it based on the center of the shape. So like this and this. And this to the center of this should be equal spacing. A better example would be to do three of the same shapes. So let's do that. And I'm just going to duplicate these. So again, distribution is just the spacing between each one is the same. It's not aligning, so we're going to align it to get it centered. Hope that all makes sense. So the arrange function is just um, for layering. So say I wanted to use these three shapes to create a design, and the circle is now at the in the middle layer, but I want that. In the back. So I'm going to select the circle and hit send to back. Now it's in the back. Now I want the triangle in the middle layer. I don't want it way behind the circle, but I want it between the heart and the circle. So I'll just hit send backward, not to back. So that just sends it one layer. And then we can do the reverse, bring it forward, or bring to the front. So that's arranging the layers. Then flip is just, again, changing the orientation. So we can flip it horizontal. Um, if this was an irregular shape, you could see that, but you get the point. Then flipping vertical just turns it upside down, and we have that. Offset, people use to do um, stickers and put borders on things. I did um, create a banner during Christmas using offset, so I'll link that video if you're interested in seeing that. And you're basically just uh, creating a border around your image that you can cut out. Now with this, you do have to hit apply once you have it at the size that you want, but you can also create a negative offset 
which puts the line inside. Okay, and then that's an extra little layer to your design where you can change the operation to draw and you can just draw inside of your shape versus cutting it out as a separate shape. Now, if you did want it to draw like that, you do have to select these and attach it so that it stays put. So next we have warp. Uh, this is not a feature that I've used, but I think it'd be fun to use with words and things like that to kind of just give you an extra little playful look to your designs. And there's a bunch of options that you can use to get creative. And lastly, up here, we have sizing and positioning. So with sizing, um, you can always size by pulling on the corners. Let's get these out of the way. These corner uh, squares here, you can size like that. And the proportions will stay the same if you drag it like this, as long as this lock is locked. If you unlock this, now we can change the look of the shape. So we can make this longer like that, make it vertical, make it super skinny. And then you can play around and make your shape look really fun. You can also get real specific and just type in the sizes if you know the look you're going for. And then you can lock it to keep that proportion like that. And then under this more tab here, you can rotate. So let's rotate this to 45 degrees. And then you can keep it like that and stretch or do whatever you want. Then lastly, we have position. So if you want to get real specific about where you're placing things on the canvas, let's say I want this at four and four. I'll go ahead and change the position here. And that's going to place it right where I want it based on the starting edge of the design. So I hope that all made sense. Um, I'll probably do two more videos in this series and then we can work on projects that use all these functions so you can get used to it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and stay tuned for the next one.